Okay, everyone. I want everyone in here to look at the person to your left. Do it. And the person to your right. One of those people, if married or is getting married, is going to have a marriage based on statistics that will end in divorce. So if you're sitting next to your spouse, they may want to have a conversation with you. But not now. This talk may help with a little bit of that. Let's just see what happens. Stay tuned. So I wasn't really sure why I never really wanted to get married. And then I realized I come from a long line of divorced people. My family love them to life. They have lots of great accomplishments, have done a lot of wonderful things. But one of the things that we have been really successful at is the mass murder of marriages. My father married and divorced three times when dating a woman he adored said that he could not marry her because he couldn't do that to someone he loved. My mom, on the other hand, my father was her high school sweetheart, very short-lived marriage. They divorced when I was three. She never got what she wanted from her marriage. She ended up dying young, penniless, and depressed. So other statistics that I saw made me even more cynical about divorce. For example, and these are statistics, this is not my stuff. Men suffer from depression more than women after divorce, which I thought was crazy. But the good thing is that because, this is statistics, they don't pay adequate child support or alimony, if any at all, they can afford really good therapists. Women, the moms, really are, end up being some of the poorest people in the country because they're trying to maintain the status quo for their children. The kids suffer from abandonment and depression and guilt and poverty. I could be considered one of those kids, kind of a victim of divorce, because I too suffered from those things, abandonment and guilt. Why did this happen? Why did my parents get a divorce? And I had never seen, really, a perfect union. So I did get married to a Southern gentleman, Wall Street broker, managed funds for high wealth people, swept me off my feet, and I thought, and he can manage my money. <laughs> So, 10 years into our marriage, spare you all the details, but I'm going to tell you this a little bit. Banging on our door early in the morning. And I'm like, what is going on? Even the kids weren't up wanting cereal yet. It was like crazy. And I'm like, what is going on? The federal marshals were at our home to take him away for financial white collar crimes. <laughs> I was like, oh, what is going on? So not to mess with my family's traditions and history and all that kind of fun stuff and our legacy of divorce. I had to divorce them. I mean, you know, I had to do what everybody else was doing, right? But also the other stat that I was living up to was being broke. So I had to sign, sell everything that was shiny and new everything that glittered, everything that had monograms on it. But I did keep my Louis Vuitton GM bag because the sister had to have something to put her court papers, my bills, and my tissues in. So I divorced Minnie Madoff and married a great guy in law enforcement. I love this man. I am so attracted to him. Nothing that he can do can stop me from just one. We like to travel together. We travel well together. We like to eat Chinese food and watch movies in bed. We make each other laugh. He's always been there for me when I was trying to build myself back up with my kids. And then a few years into our marriage, I was like, oh my God, 
we're unhappily in love and this is not supposed to happen. So I woke up one morning alone and I thought I have to have a real serious conversation with him. So I went into where he was sleeping and I said to him, baby, I love you. I don't feel like we should be living unhappily in our home. I don't want any part of your misery and we deserve so much better. I'm gonna move. Oh my God. He didn't like that. He seemed to be shocked, but a little relieved actually. And I felt a little lighter. I told him this had nothing to do with wanting a divorce. I could totally see myself growing old with this man, especially because we can travel well together. And I'm like, hey, that's hard to find. <laughs> so I was thinking about this. Like, how did I get into this situation? I run recruiting offices. I used to build them nationally. I had to match people to opportunities. We did all this vetting of the person and the company and did they match and all this other stuff. And then I also said, what? I don't even think I did all of that to vet either one of my partners. Like, what, what am I doing? And I thought, when we're looking for a job, <laughs> we are literally asking all these different questions. We want to know about how PTO, career trajectory, is the company financially stable? Where's the Starbucks? Do we have good parking? How much is the parking? What time's the parking lot close? What kind of snacks are in the snack room? Are they carb-free, organic, wrapped in biodegradable paper, right? And then, what are we asking about our spouse? I know I didn't know social security numbers. I hadn't seen financials. I was in love, but I didn't know nothing. You know, I knew what I saw and the stuff you just have in just normal conversations, but I literally didn't like dig deep to do any vetting. Well, I'm really proud of myself because I had the courage to be transparent and ask and to say to my husband what I felt like I really needed. It was really difficult. But we realized that courage equals transparency. And transparency and emotional fluency are what make us more courageous. All right, so why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you all my personal business. Why am I doing this? <laughs> because I do want to encourage people with so much going on in the world. If you're with someone you love and cared about at one point in time and you still see good in them, to be courageous enough to be transparent. Know that renegotiating your marital agreement, whether it's written or you got to do a prenup, renegotiating it is the same as having an annual performance review at work. You sit down every year and you say, what's the next best thing for all of us? So I want you to listen to this. I have a little question. I want you guys to not think about what your marriage can do for you, but what can being courageous do for your marriage. Good luck, guys. Thank you.